We are now in the city of St. Petersburg, the city where the revolution provokes uh, contradictory uh, thoughts. One of the key issues about a revolution is whether it is local or could have global consequences. As to the reply of this issue, to this question, it is not clear. There are not available, readily available evaluation. Some experts believe that the resources of non-traditional gas could be compared uh, to uh, those of natural gas. Others mind heavily. What is next? And next come the uncertainty, economics, environmental issues, geography and politics. Let us start with uh, e economics. Uh, the uh, production ratio of non-traditional gas in the country with traditional gas is quite low and the costs of production are quite heavy even now and it is not very clear how to integrate it into the full cycle uh, of costs uh, uh, down to closing the wells and uh, treatment of water etc. And the development of the technology of the shale gas production could only become economically viable in just one country due to high prices. We know that when new energy sources are being developed to make them more attractive and competitive, uh, sometimes uh, the entire body of costs are deliberately or not deliberately uh, being um, hidden. This was the case once with uh, nuclear energy when they did not take into account the recultivation costs and the um, decommissioning costs, etc. So in one word, uh, the success in the production of non-traditional gas doesn't mean that others, other countries will follow suit. That means that a revolution locally uh, might not become global. So generally we'll have to decide whether it is a revolution or a situational reaction. It is quite probable that this technology can only be used locally. According to IH projections, the share of unconventional gas in the global gas production mix, even under most optimistic scenarios, is not expected to exceed 14, 18.5% by 2030. That is to say, it will not be the key source of global gas supply. It means then that uh, there is no viable alternative to natural gas in the foreseeable future. So, given the current dynamics, what can we expect from the gas market? Much has been said about the so-called guests uh, glut about the irreversible advance of the spot market and the need to renegotiate if not forgo long-term contracts about alternative pricing mechanisms and a removal of gas price linkages to prices of all other fuels. Such questions invariably emerge across various sectors in times of crisis and dramatic changes in the market environment. We should address those in composed and well-balanced manner. Let us try to look at this in more detail. What has been underpinning reliable and under interrupted gas supply to the European market. The answer is obvious. Long-term contract. Slide 8, please. Uh, look at this slide and you can see clearly that a major natural gas field development and liquefaction facility construction during the last 20, 30 years were only possible due to advance of um, contracting of potential gas volumes. Long-term contracts enabled producers to manage risks and pursue multi-billion investments while uh, consumers were offered a sense of security. Um, uh, gas port market has been rapidly developing in the recent years as well slide 9. And according to the data available, the share of spot markets in the EU has been consistently growing in recent years, mainly, due to, uh, mainly in continental Europe, reaching 26% in 2009. This has led many experts to believe that gas trading in Europe is poised to approach the uh, US model where all gas is traded on the spot market. Will it be possible? I don't think it is possible, but it's also economically misguided. First of all, as opposed to the US, the liquid of the European spot market uh, remains extremely limited due to the lack of necessary resources and related infrastructure. Secondly, the spot market can only supplement but not substitute um, uh, and replace the contract market. It allows to trade gas in case of an oversupply. I would like to under underscore a temporary oversupply. The spot markets cannot ensure resource-based growth in line with the growing long-term gas ne uh, needs. 
And I would like to see the investor who will be willing to uh, gamble on multi-billion investment decisions amid volatility, uncertainty, and gas price and predictable. We've got uh, um, leading experts here and they're very well aware that price and elasticity of gas demand and gas production um, is present. Uh, years pass between investment decisions and new gas supply to the markets, uh, which means that economic recovery and new strong gas demand will sooner or later turn excess into shortage. It is true there is excess LNG capacity, capacity in some regions, however, in the absence of new investments, um, this uh, capacity will be rapidly uh, tapped and then uh, we would have uh, to face bitterness. Consumers uh, and responsible politicians should ask themselves whether they are actually willing to give up long-term energy security for temporary gains related to spoke market development and removal of long-term contracts. Um, uh, and um, uh, I would like to remind you that um, if uh, financial investors start considering short-term gas contracts as part of their investment strategies, it may result in a speculative premium uh, to the fundamental equilibrium price, as was the case with the oil prices uh, in 2008 and 2009. Some say that only uh, producing countries and Russia above all benefit from long-term contracts, but this is not true. This is a two-way street. And uh, no matter how per, um, ironic of this may sound, the effects of sport markets could perfectly suit Russia, as any price decrease immediately makes unconventional gas production uneconomical. Slide 10, please. The existing Russian natural gas fields have a safety margin in respect of production costs, um, and experts know that very well. Uh, it's another thing that um, uh, development of new projects uh, requires certain economic conditions, and one should remember. Remember that measures taken to ensure equal profitability of the domestic and export markets provide additional stability to the Russian gas producers. Uh, perhaps uh, because of the economic slowdown in Europe, uh, new gas volumes may not be necessary. If so, then consumers should tell us about it. Uh, but if the new gas volumes are indeed required, including to cover peak demand in autumn and winter, as last winter, for example, then the long-term economic feasibility should be taken into account by the consumers and by the regulators alike. Otherwise, the producers will compensate through market diversification. Uh, for example, Gazprom already have requests uh, uh, to supply uh, Asia-Pacific region consumers to the tune of 123 billion cubic uh, meters annually. By the way, um, Professor uh, Daniel Ergen present here in his uh, book Russia 2010, and I'm holding the copy here. He said there that uh, uh, gas industry successfully develops within a framework of semi-public operation that gradually diversifies its product markets through Asia-Pacific region. I'm quoting, I think it's a very good forecast. Uh, also, this would be achieved through enhancing of the appeal of the domestic market, diversification of transportation routes uh, and product lines, LNG, power generation, GTL, gas conversion, nitrogen fertilizers, natural gas, as motor fuel, etc. And I'd like to draw your attention to yet another important aspect of gas uh, pricing, the structure of end consumer prices in Europe. Uh, we keep hearing that Russia and Gazprom uh, uh, overpriced Let's have a look at slide 11. I believe these charts are self-explanatory. Gazprom's export price represents no more than 30-40% of the end price for European households and 60-70% of the price for industrial consumers. So who is, gets the biggest share of profits from gas sales to end consumers? It's not Gazprom for sure. I didn't include this data to settle scores or to blame anyone uh, for gas prices. I just wanted to make it absolutely clear that producers should not be demonized uh, in uh, price setting. Um, there are many uh, markets uh, agents who, who impact it, not only the producers and any relevant discussions should take into account the interest of all stakeholders and be absolutely transparent. 
Professor Jürgen in his recent speeches uh, was saying that guest producers uh, were essentially mute. They do not communicate well enough the advantages of wider use of guests to the international community. I would like to ask Professor Jürgen to share his ideas as to what, in his view, should be done in this regard. And to conclude, slide 12, please. I would like to highlight uh, once again the key conditions that uh, uh, we believe uh, should be uh, present for sustainable development of the market based on the interest of all uh, stakeholders. First of all, we need to depoliticize issues of gas production, transit and consumption. Let's focus on the economics and the environment and make uh, rational decisions based on objective information. We would welcome gas source diversification. We will be di diversifying our markets, transportation routes and product lines. Secondly, ensuring long-term energy security could be achieved through creation of market conditions and mechanisms supporting development of the resource bus and infrastructure for reliable and sustainable gas deliveries regardless of short-term market trends and based on transparency of gas uh, balances for both the consumers and the producers. And thirdly, ensuring access to information, technologies and financing resources based on the economic rationale and mutual interest of all market participants. Such conditions may be achieved only via broad cross-border cooperation. Thank you for your attention.